Good morning, dear brothers and sisters. Welcome to our celebration of the Holy Eucharist. Today, we celebrate the memorial of St. Charles Luanga and Companions, Martyrs. Our Mass presiders is Reverend Father Dave Concepcion. As gold in the furnace, the Lord put his chosen to the test. A sacrificial took them to himself, and in due time, they will be honored and grace and peace will be with the elect of God. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We remember all those who are celebrating their birthdays today, their wedding anniversaries, because of the <coughs> General Quarantine, JCQ, there's a rise in numbers of COVID patients and we pray for those who just tested positive, their families are worried about them, of course they are worried about themselves, we pray for their healing. We pray for protection for everyone. We continue to pray for those who are in the front lines and uh, for all the repose of the souls of our dearly departed and all other intentions offered in this Mass. To prepare ourselves to participate in the sacred mysteries, let us first call to mind our sins and humbly ask the Lord for His pardon and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary Ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. O God, you have made the blood of martyrs the seed of Christians. Mercifully grant that the field which is your church watered by the blood shed by St. Charles Luanga and his companions, may be fertile and always yield you an abundant harvest. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the beginning of the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, for the promise of life in Christ Jesus to Timothy, my dear child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience as my ancestors did. As I remember you constantly in my prayers, night and day. For this reason, I remind you to stir into flame the gift of God that you have through the imposition of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather of power and love and self-control. So do not be ashamed of your testimony to our Lord, nor of me, a prisoner for his sake, but bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. He saved us and called us to a holy life, 
not according to our works, but according to his own design. The grace bestowed on us in Christ Jesus before time began, but now made manifest to the appearance of our Savior Christ Jesus, who destroyed death and brought life in immortality to life through the gospel, for which I was appointed preacher and apostle and teacher. On this account, I am suffering these things, but I am not ashamed, for I know him in whom I have believed, and I am confident that he is able to guard what has been entrusted to me until that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To you, O Lord, I lift up my eyes. To you, O Lord, I lift up my eyes. To you, I lift up my eyes, who are enthroned in heaven. Behold, as the eyes of servants are on the hands of their masters. To you, O Lord, I lift up my eyes. As the eyes of a maid are on the hands of her mistress, so are our eyes on the Lord our God, till have pity on us. To you, O Lord, I lift up my eyes. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will never die. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Some Sadducees who say there is no resurrection came to Jesus and put this question to him saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us, If someone's brother dies leaving a wife but no child, his brother must take the wife and raise up descendants for his brother. Now, there were seven brothers. The first married a woman and died, leaving no descendants. So the second brother married her and died, leaving no descendants. And the third likewise, and the seven left no descendants. Last of all, the woman also died. At the resurrection, when they arise, whose wife will she be? For all seven had been married to her. Jesus said to them, Are you not misled because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God? When they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but they are like the angels in heaven. As for the dead being raised, have you not read in the book of Moses in the passage about the bush? How God told him, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is, not God, he is not the God of the dead, but of the living. You are greatly misled. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. If someone's brother dies leaving a wife but no child, his brother must take the wife and raise up descendants for his brother. That is a law. A law up to now, some tribes or countries are practicing it. They call it the law of liberate marriage. The law of liberate marriage. L-E-V-I-R-A-T-E. -E. Why was the law imposed? Because they want to protect widows. They want to protect widows. 
because women don't have voices in their community, so they need a man to speak for them. They need to be protected. So, pag yan ay hindi nagkaanak, balo, paano na lang yan? So, they created a law for it. Kaya nga, noong unang panahon, ang una nag-aasawa, palaging panganay dapat. Panganay. Siyempre, mga kapatid na lalaki, ano po, sinasabihan yung panganay, huwag kang mag-aasawa ng pangit, ha? Kasi pag hindi nang anak yan, pakakasalang ko, di ba? Ano? Yung mga, ako, lumaki ako yung mana-mana eh. Mana-mana ng damit. Ano po? Pagkatapos gamitin ng panganay yung damit, ipapamana do sa kasunod. Ano po? Talagang ilang salin yung damit. Ano po? Ito, hindi lang yung damit. Yung asawa, pag hindi kayo nanganak. Ano po? That's the law of liberate marriage. But my dear friends, my brothers and sisters, first, first, what is Jesus trying to say is that I have nothing against the law. I do not question the law. But Jesus explained what his marriage is all about. Marriage is not measured by the number of children you brought forth into this world. Even though, even though, if you read the documents about Familiaris Consortio, the number one perhaps purpose of marriage is procreation. Mahalaga yun. Ano pa? Hindi kayo nagsasama for the sake of sex. Dapat ang inyong intensyon ay sabi nga kayo ay makabuo para sa bayan ng Diyos. Pag tiningnan po ninyo yung mga Hudyo, if you go to Israel, there is a kind of Jew, they call it Hasidic. Ano po? They are the extra Orthodox. Ano po? Talagang ang trabaho lang lang mga babae doon, mga anak. Mga anak. Ano po? At makakakita kayo doon, nanganganak yung babae, dalawang beses sa isang taon. Nagpapang-abot. Ano po? Nagpapang-abot. Why? Because the second purpose of the law is to protect the land. To protect the land. Ano pa ano mo ipagtatanggol lang yung bayan? Kung wala kayong mga anak na lumalaki. Hindi po ba? Mahalaga yun. Again, going back to the words of Jesus, but the purpose of marriage, I mean, marriage is measured not on the number of children, but of fidelity. Many times I have said this, when God speaks of intimacy, He uses the image of mother and child, but when God speaks of faithfulness, of fidelity, He uses the image of husband and wife. Kailangan tapat ang katapatan ng mag-asawa, ang panukatan ng pagiging mabuting asawa. Tapat, hindi po ba? Ano? Palagi ko yan sinasabi, pag binasa niyo yung salitang tapat, T-A-P-A-T, tapat. Pag binasa niyo pabalik, tapat pa rin, hindi po ba? Wala kang ibang tatapatan. Pag pinakasalan mo na yan, yan ang, yan, yan ka na laging nakatapat, hindi po ba? Pag hindi ka tapat sa iyong asawa, ang tawag sa iyo ay tabingi. Hindi po ba? Pag hindi tapat, tabingi. Ano po? What is the Tagalog word for righteous? As I always say this, the Tagalog word for righteous ay hindi palaging tama. Ang Tagalog ng salitang righteous is matuwid. Matuwid. Nawa ikaw ay maging matuwid sa Diyos. Hindi yung hindi ka nagkakamali. Matuwid ka. Paano ka nagiging matuwid? Tapat ka sa iyong sinusumpaan. 
tapat. Pagkamisan, ano po, hindi pinagdadasal ko yung mga mga prayer intentions kahit tapos na ang misa. Misa nagdadasal, ano po, sabi nung isang nagnakalagay, Lord, ah, sabi niya, please pray for my husband who is sick. So, sasabihin ko naman sa Diyos, Lord, I pray for her husband who is sick. And sometimes the thought will come, whose husband? Who is her husband? Nag-iisip tuloy ako, ba't kaya sinabi ni Lord yon? Ano po? Baka mayroong ibang husband ito, hindi po ba? Ano? Isulat mo, kung ikaw ay nagpapadasal ng para sa asawa mo, isulat mo ang pangalan ng asawa mo. Para alam ni Lord. Baka sabi ni Lord, hindi mo naman asawa yan ha. Hindi po ba? Magandang pagtuna ng pansin ito. My dear friends, my brothers and sisters, that's why the first reading speaks of what? The first reading speaks of worshiping God in clear conscience. In clear conscience. It is important that you come before God in clear conscience. What does it mean to have a clear conscience? You have a moral foundation where you stand. Meron kang moralidad. Kaya may mga taong kahit anong ginawang kasalanan, ang sagot nila, malinis naman ang aking konsensya. Ang ibig sabihin nun, wala kang pinaninindigang moralidad. The only way to stand with a clear conscience before God is to be able to stand on a moral principle. There must be a moral principle, my brothers and sisters. To be righteous is to live according to your moral principle. Hindi sapat tayo nagsisimba-simba. Kaya nga, itong panahong pinagbabawal ang pagsisimba, ang tanong dyan palagi ay, malinis ba ang iyong konsensya? Do you live in a moral principle? Do you live a life founded in your moral principle? Yun ang mahalaga. Hindi yung nagsisimba o hindi nagsisimba. Ang moralidad mo pa rin ang mahalaga sa harapan ng Diyos. Malinis ba ang iyong konsensya? Kasi aanuhin mo ang iyong pagsamba kung hindi naman malinis ang iyong konsensya. Yun ang panawagan sa unang pagbasa. It is not the number of times. You know we have been discussing about this. Why is the church not allowed to open when the malls are already open? For one simple answer. The church is not economically viable. Yun lang ang sagot doon. Hindi kumikita ang gobyerno sa simbahan. Hindi po ba? Sorry for the words. Perhaps that is the only viable answer. Huwag mo sasabing magkakahawa-hawa tayo dito sa loob. Bakit sa mall ba? Hindi. Kung magsiksikan sila dyan sa kalsada. Anyway, what is your moral foundation? Why do you think? Why do you choose? Why do you decide? That's the important question. We are celebrating the memorial of Charles Luanga and companions. They were martyred. Why? Because they stand against an immoral leader. They were martyred because they stand against an immoral leader. My dear friends, my brothers and sisters, many times I have said this, for an evil man to triumph is for a good man to do nothing. But for you to do something, you must understand where do you stand. To understand is to stand under. Under what? Some moral principles or belief. Husbands and wives who are here, 
don't expect that you will be blessed without some moral principle. Your marriages are not measured according to the number of children. It is being measured according to your faithfulness. And this is the grace we would like to ask from the Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, to your goodness this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water in wine, we may come to share the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, to your goodness this wine to offer, Fruit of the vine, work human hands have made, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer with humble and contrite heart. Pray, brothers and sisters, that this sacrifice of yours and mine be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. We offer you sacrifice, O Lord, humbly praying that as you granted the blessed martyrs, Charles Luanga and Companion, Grace to die rather than sin, so you may bring us to minister at your altar in dedication to you alone, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father. Almighty and eternal God, for you are glorified when your saints are praised, their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy you give ardor to their faith, to their endurance you grant firm resolve, and in their struggle the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. Therefore all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the hosts of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more gave you thanks. Gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Broderick, our administrator, all the bishops and all the clergy. Father, please hear the prayers of your children gathered before your holy presence. Let's spend a few moments of silence and I invite you, brothers and sisters, that you personally ask the Lord for a special grace you want to receive in this Eucharistic celebration. Ask the Lord. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, our most chaste spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Charles Luanga and Companion, with Santa Maria Goretti and all the saints of please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Gathering all our prayers into one, let us now pray to the Father in the very words our Lord Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all unnecessary worries and distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Kindly look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace within our hearts, peace in our mind, peace in our own homes, in our own families. Peace in our workplace, peace in our community, peace in our country and in the world. And grant you unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reign forever and ever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the peace of our Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now bless one another by giving each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. This is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are you who are invited here to receive him in Holy Communion. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray the prayer of Padre Pio Petrocina. Stay with me, Lord, for it is necessary to have you present so that I do not forget you. You know how I easily abandon you. Stay with me, Lord, because I am weak and I need your strength, that I may not fall so often. Stay with me, Lord, for you are my life, and without you I am without fervor. Stay with me, Lord, for you are my light, and without you, I am in darkness. Stay with me, Lord, to show me your will. Stay with me, Lord, so that I hear your voice and follow you. Stay with me, Lord, for I desire to love you very much and always be in your company. Stay with me, Lord, if you wish me to be faithful to you. Stay with me, Lord, for as poor as my soul is, I want it to be a place of consolation for you, a nest of love. Stay with me, Jesus, for it is getting late and the day is coming to a close, and life passes, death, judgment, eternity approaches. It is necessary to renew my strength so that I will not stop along the way. And for that, I need you. It is getting late and death approaches. I fear the darkness, the temptations, the dryness, the cross, the sorrows. Oh, how I need you, my Jesus, in this night of exile. Stay with me tonight, Jesus, in life with all its dangers, I need you. Let me recognize you as your disciples did at the breaking of the bread so that the Eucharistic communion be the light which disperses the darkness, the force which sustains me, the unique joy of my heart. Stay with me, Lord, because at the hour of my death, I want to remain united to you. If not by communion, at least by grace and love. Stay with me, Jesus. I do not ask for divine consolation because I do not merit it. 
But the gift of your presence, oh yes, I ask this of you. Stay with me, Lord, for it is you alone I look for, your love, your grace, your will, your heart, your spirit, because I love you. And ask no other reward but to love you more and more. With a firm love, I will love you with all my heart while on earth and continue to love you perfectly during all eternity. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We have received this divine sacrament, O Lord, as we celebrate the victory of your holy martyrs. May what help them to endure torment, we pray, make us in the face of trials steadfast in faith and in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray the prayer for a new Archbishop for Archdiocese of Manila. Heavenly Father, you have blessed our Archdiocese time and again with good, holy, learned, and wise shepherds who have led us ever closer to you. Aware of your profound love for us, we ask you to bless us once again. Send us a good, holy, learned, and wise man to become our next Archbishop. Inspire us, the clergy, religious, and laity, to work generously with him so that we might grow together in your love and continue the good work you have begun in us for the sake of all people. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Prayer for our family. Dearest Father in heaven, bless our family and bless us with new beginnings. Smile upon our parents and surround our children with the soft mantle of your love. Teach every child of ours to follow in your footsteps and to live life in the ways of faith, hope, and charity. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Kindly mention your intentions. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Santa Maria Goretti, pray for us. Please rise. You all know that we are housing some frontliners here in Pius. And yesterday, they have two positive. It is because there is an increase of patients who are positive in the hospitals. Ang akin pong paalala, mag-ingat po kayo. Mag-ingat po kayo. Ano pa? Hindi ibig sabihin pwedeng lumabas. Kung hindi nyo naman talaga kailangan lumabas, huwag kayong lumabas. Ano pa? Kung lalabas, mag-ingat. Mag-ingat palagi. Hindi lang para sa sarili, kundi sa mga kasambahay. Do not forget to like and share our online masses. That's the only way to conquer those who hide our masses. My dear friends, my brothers and sisters, you know this, that to, is to understand is to stand under. Under what? Some moral beliefs and principles. The only way to worship God in a clear conscience is to live a life 
rooted in morality. Hindi yan palakasan ng kanta, hindi yan palakasan ng, 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 ng musika, hindi yan pagandahan ng prayer. The same with marriage. Marriage is measured not in the number of children or how you will you have been providing for your family. But it is always founded in your fidelity, in your faithfulness to one another. Be faithful, husbands and wives. Be faithful. Maging tapat sa isa't isa. Maging tapat sa isa't isa. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy. Hail our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To you do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To you do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this body of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, your eyes of mercy towards us. And after these, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mary, Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. 